As we go through this presentation, those who have become saints of orthodoxy will be titled as saints. Hello to all my interested friends. Thank you for watching. On the left is our church around 1916. Um, you, you can see that it's of wood structure. 1900 storm blew the cupola off the, the church and to the right is our church today. Uh, it was bricked in 1949. I'm Mimo Milosevic. Just a bit of a preface to this presentation. When I was a young altar boy, I would go with the priests when blessing the homes, late 1950s, and fortunately got to hear many stories about the history of our church and past priests. There were frequent stories of our first priest, Father Theocletus, they referred to him as the Greek priest. And when I was around 15, 1964, our cemetery property was needed by the highway department to expand 61st Street. Our parish leaders went to the highway department to convince them to move all of our 86 loved ones rather than having to build an overpass over our cemetery. This would cost the state far less, so the state agreed to it. I was the altar boy and singer for all the exhumations and reburials services. From my view, the families, while standing around crying, got to hear them. I got to hear them while they told old stories of our church and past parishioners. My mother was one who was constantly and proudly telling people that she was baptized by the first priest, Father Theocletus. Also, my good friend Diamond Athanasius contributed greatly to the information that I realized I was searching for over the years. In fact, it was after his death in 2006 that I first started writing all this down. I learned that for the first known Serbian in America was George Sagic, but I also heard of a fellow named George Fisher. Later I found that Sagic and Fisher were one and the same person and he lived here from the early 1820s until 1850. He served the Mexican government as the port director of the Port of Galveston, but then joined General Sam Houston in the Revolution, and he was a major at the Battle of San Jacinto. I, learned, I later learned that he had been a seminarian in Korlovsi, Serbia, and that after he left Galveston, he had become a board member in organizing the Russian Cathedral in San Francisco. I learned that the first Greek to Galveston was Captain Nicholas. He was the captain of the Marabella, one of the notorious privateer Jean Lafitte's ships. That after Lafitte's death in Honduras, he returned to Galveston and took part in the Orthodox prayer group here. He is believed to have lived 100 years and believed to have died in the 1900 storm. I learned that the first Syro-Arab Orthodox Christian, Philip uh, Tedro, came to Galveston in 1850 as the lead person at this end importing camels in the U.S. Army's camel experiment, using them to transport military equipment in the desert southwest. The soldiers called him High Jolly, and he helped many uh, friends come to America, but the program ended with the Civil War, so he and the last of the remaining animals moved to Arizona. I also learned that our church had its beginnings in a prayer group started in 1862. Much later in life, I confirmed that they had their meetings at the Knights of Pythias Hall, and that the hall was lent to them by one of the Pythias members, who was a, also a member of the 14th Texas Legislature, named D.U. Barziza. Barziza was the great-grandson of Philip Lidwell III, a wealthy British landowner in the Virginias. Ludwell was the first known Orthodox convert in, to America in the early 1700s. And I learned that the forerunner prayer group called themselves the Parish of St. Constantine and Helen. In the 33 years of the prayer group before our church was built, it had become better organized, prayed in English, the common language they were all trying to learn, but had side groups for Slavonic and Greek speakers. In the late 1880s, 
they elected officers, Resto Vukovic, Kirsto Chuk, and Arthur Minutis, and had over the next few years petitioned different bishops back home for a priest of any language and received only denials in return because of the great distance, and that in 1895 they created a religious nonprofit organization. Then they purchased a 43-foot front by 120-foot deep property and built our rectangular church building just 20 feet to the east of its present location. So finally the group had learned the only diocese available to them was the North American Russian Mission. The officers sent three letters, one to the Holy Synod, two to Bishop Nicholas in Sitka, Alaska, and the third was personally to Tsar Nicholas II, all signed by Easter Vukovic, Arthur's Minutis, and Krzysztof explaining their plight and stating their numbers to be 117 men, 24 women, 24 male children, and 20 female children. They also knew of 79 other Orthodox persons within the distance of a few hundred miles of Galveston. Within days, the Tsar answered and included these words, let there be an Orthodox church in Galveston. The Tsar assembled a religious care package for us, including the four main icons and the Lord's Supper for the Iconostas, icon screen, the procession fans, a miniature chapel for the reserve sacrament for the uh, altar table, an ornate gospel, one of twelve, that were commissioned by the Tsar's father. We believe only two exist today, here and in Sitka, Alaska. All of the liturgical items, including assigned antimines for the priest he was sending. To the right is the oldest picture I have of any gathering of our church people. I believe the first person standing up on the left is uh, Krzysztof Vukovic. In an early June of 1895, Bishop Nicholas sent his representative, a Father Ambrose Vretta, to take a look at our already long-existing parish, all gathered to have liturgy and a picnic on their newly acquired property in the first celebration of the church's saints, the parish's Saints' Day, making him the forerunner Orthodox priest to Texas. I've documented that he stayed at the Tremont Hotel. Today, although many of our generations and member of members have moved into the U.S. interior, our church has the sixth generation baptized here, while we constantly receive new Orthodox immigrants and newcomers to our Orthodox faith, and while our Greek brothers and sisters created their own Greek church in Galveston in, in 1932. A point of much interest, of course, is that in 1949 our old wooden church was bricked and sheetrocked but the original church is still here under those coverings. And now on with the presentation. The Forgotten Saint, the Forgotten Church, the Forgotten Island, a true global citizen. Archimandrite Father Theocletus Triantaphilides, guided by saints, priest of three kings. He was born in 1833 in the village of Igio, Peloponnese Peninsula, Greece. His father was an Athenian fisherman, but his mother pushed him to the church. His birth name was Theodorus, his nickname was Theos, and his name day was October the 4th, the feast of St. Irotheus, the first bishop of Athens. He was tonsured a monk at St. Pontilamon Russian Monastery on Mount Athos and he made numerous visits to the Serbian monastery of Hilandar, about 10 miles away. He had become fascinated with languages and cultures. He received a master's degree from Moscow Theological Academy in 1872 and served there for a time. He also served the seminaries of Volynia, uh, northwestern Ukraine, and Ekaterinoslav, uh, southeastern Ukraine. King George of Greece asked him to tutor his son in orthodoxy. Later he tutored uh, Tsar Alexander's six children in other orthodox cultures. 
It is said he was one of 30 celebrants at the wedding of Tsar, of St. Tsar Nicholas II and St. Tsaritsa Alexandra. The parishioners of Galveston would later call him the priest of three kings, George I, Alexander III, Nicholas II. As I said, a multi-ethnic group of Orthodox Christians were having reader services in their new common language English since 1862, and still together in January of 1895, they formed a Texas corporation and bought land and built a rectangular church building. They petitioned St. Tsar Nicholas and he accepted their plea. St. Tsar Nicholas chose his teacher, Father Theocletus Triantaphilides, telling him, let there be an Orthodox Church in Galveston. By then, Father Theocletus was 61 years of age, a well-traveled man, and could communicate in 13 different languages. Archimandrite Theocletus sailed to New York with seven companions, his three deacons, St. Archimandrite Raphael and his three deacons, and a deacon who was the nephew to Bishop Nicholas of the North American Russian Mission. Now to the left is the common uh, old uh, picture of St. Raphael. On the right is a picture of one of Father Theocletus' deacons who in 1932 became Metropolitan Theophilus. Bishop Nicholas met them in New York on November the 14th, 1895. And as you're researching, you come upon these Eureka moments. This is a clipping and drawing from Joseph Pulitzer's New York publication, The World, Monday, November the 18th, 1895, of the first service to consecrate St. Raphael's church. St. Raphael is at the altar, Father Theocletus is in the center of the church. Bishop Nicholas Shiorov is with his back to us. Retired Bishop Innocent is to the left side. This was a marvelous find. A few days later, the bishop and Father Theos, with their deacons, traveled west, with Father Theos and only one of his deacons heading south at Kansas City. Father Theo stopped for a time in Hortzorn, Oklahoma, to serve the religious needs of a group of Russian miners, and then on to Galveston. Arriving here in early January, his multi-ethnic parish was amazed to be welcoming a multilingual archimandrite and a deacon, not just a priest. He had services in a mix of Slavonic, Greek, Arabic, and English. He was simply far ahead of his time. This is the older picture, oldest picture we have of our Iconostas, but that is Father Palomarchu, not Father Theocletus, circa 1923. He completed building our Iconostas, and on March the 15th, 1896, the first liturgy was celebrated in the new church. They invited Bishop Nicholas, and he consecrated our church on June the 3rd, 1896. In 1897, Bishop Nicholas replaced his deacon with a Russian monk, a Father Mikhail Kurdinatsky, to allow Father Theos time to travel and invited him to San Francisco to speak to the Greeks there on uh, the mounting losses of the people of Crete in their revolution against Ottoman rule. The service and sermon is still known to this day as prayers for the Cretans. After that, he was asked to travel with St. Archimandrite Sebastian Dabovich to Portland and Seattle. St. Sebastian visited Galveston in 1908. In 1898, he again went to San Francisco for the installation of St. Tikhon Balavan, replacing Bishop Nicholas, and St. Tikhon appointed Father Theocletos as rector of the San Francisco Cathedral for a period of nine months during portions of 1898 and 1899. Father Theos's return to Galveston in 1899 was during the first of two visits by St. Tikhon to our parish. This was to visit with St. Raphael, who was on a journey to northern Mexico to meet with a colony of Arab Christians. At right is a photo I found 
in the archives of the University of Texas at San Antonio. Here is St. Raphael walking the streets of Hondo, Texas, and no, I don't have an answer for the top hat. As word of him spread, Father Theos visited many points going east to Mobile, south to Brownsville, and north to Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, and many other places, serving the religious needs wherever he found our Orthodox Christians. In 1898, the Weimar, Texas newspaper tells where he commandeered the local Roman Catholic Church in LaGrange, Texas to perform the wedding of a Greek couple, and then again in 1904, a Syrian couple. But on September the 8th, 1900, Galveston was hit by the greatest natural disaster in U.S. history, the 1900 storm. Twenty-four in our parish lost their lives, and 18 more in the aftermath. Father Theo spent 24 hours in the church with parishioners and neighbors that sought safety in the church. After the storm, the church structure was standing, though it had floated to the west about 20 feet and had lost its cupola. Those in the church believed Father Theos and his church had truly saved their lives. The extensive damage was repaired and St. Tikhon reconsecrated the church on June 3, 1901. This event made Father Theos and our church not only patronized by and visited by, but also consecrated by future saints of orthodoxy. Father Theos became friends with many in Galveston as they became enchanted by his Eastern Orthodox monastic ways. He was awarded the Order of St. Vladimir and St. Anne by St. Tsar Nicholas II. The neighbor children would await his return on shopping days. He would always have a big bag of fruit for them and one for his parish children. He was a constant visitor to St. Mary's and John Seeley hospitals, and in 1910 he was a founding member of the Associated Charities. He became a friend to many f neighbor fr families who felt his visits made their lives better. He converted to Orthodoxy the Dambito, Matthews, and Lalero families, to name a few. Then in his 81st year, the island was hit by the storm of 1915. Again, Father Theos and others prayed in the church. The church floated to the north into the street. The congregation moved the church back into place with mules, skids, pipes, turnbuckles, and muscle. The following article was written about Father Theocletus by martyr saint Father Alexander Hodowitzki, published in the American Orthodox Messenger in November of 1913 while the author was rector of St. Nicholas Cathedral in New York. St. Alexander visited here in 1909. The venerable celebrated elder, Father Ar Archimandri Theocletus, among the worthy, hard working in our mission, there is already one who has greatly labored for almost 20 years, Father Archimandri Theocletus Triantaphilides, a Greek native. He graduated from Moscow Theological Academy and served at the Russian Theological Seminaries in Volyna and Ekaterinoslav as an honorable tutor of the children of His Majesty the King of Greece from 1884 until 1889, a citizen of the Russian Empire and now a worker for the North American Russian Mission, Archimandri Theocletus is a typical example how deeply and profoundly the Orthodox Russian Church embraces talents, service, and nations when growing. Currently, Father Archimandrit is in the full understanding of the words, flesh from the mission's flesh, having served in Galveston, then San Francisco, then back again to Galveston. He unites by himself both Slavs and Greeks. By the extended services of his language skills, he fully acquires for orthodoxy the most remote corner of the mission. Already a venerable elder, for he is nearing his eighth decade, Father Archimandrit is a man of great prayer. With the appearance of a noble patriarch, he has an attractive combination of a benevolent disposition, the expressive conciseness of the ancient Greeks, and a touching love for children. His plain church 
having the name Saints Constantine and Helen, was among the first in the mission. The parish has existed since 1862, even established by both Slavs and Greeks. From the fullness of our hearts, we congratulate the celebrated elder for his 18th anniversary of blessed missionary work and exclaim many years to the all honorable Father Archimandri Theocletos. Glory to the most honorable one. On October 22, 1916, Father Theos passed to his creator just short of his 83rd year. His parishioners brought his remains to the church and stood vigil over him until his funeral. Archbishop Evdekim of New York ordered his diocese and secretary, Father Peter Popoff, Popoff along with Father Lodniki Kroshkov and Father Paul Chubarov, to immediately travel to Galveston. They arrived five days later, and funeral services were held that afternoon. Note, on the right-hand side are the three priests that came. Father Popoff in the center was the deacon nephew to Bishop Nicholas that had first come to America with Father Theocletus. The county judge gave permission to inter him under the church's altar, where he remains to this day. Vietnaya Pamyat, Memory Eternal. The top picture on the left is the funeral procession to the back of the church. The picture on the right is where the priests and pallbearers push the casket into the newly prepared vault under the altar. And the bottom picture is the people at his 40 days memorial service. We know that Father uh, Theos gave most of his sermons in English. Other than in his metrics and travel jottings, these are the only 287 words we have from him at this point in our research. His Christmas Eve sermon, given on January 6th, 1914. My children, before Jesus came into the world, the earth lacked the attributes of sympathetic understanding, which we find necessary to our happiness in this era. The Lord gave us his Son, Jesus, to soften us, to give us understanding of human wants, to give us a sense of forgiveness, to teach us that to forgive is our duty, and to teach us charity. My children, be charitable. Open your hearts. For only in charity is there happiness. Make life lighter for your brother and your sister, and the candle you light for them will make your light brighter. God gave us Jesus, and Jesus gave us his all, even his life. We can do no more than emulate him, and in doing that, we do all. Think today of the poor whom he loved. Lighten their burdens, even as he did. Open your hearts, O my children, even as did Jesus of Bethlehem. My children, when he came among us, he did not ask, Of what nationality art thou? What is thy belief? No. He came down among us and was one of us, and he ministered to us. Open thy hearts likewise, my children, and go among the poor and succor them, all the poor, for they are thy brothers and sisters, my children, and they are his people. My children, many of you are not native to this land, and it is well to treasure memories of thine own country. But think of this as a good land, and its people are good to thy people, and you are his people. Learn to love, be honest, tolerant, forgiving, and charitable. I pray you Merry Christmas, my children, and many, many years of happiness. Just a note, that is my underlying emphasis. And of course to the right is a picture of the interior of our church with the iconostas that he built. Father Theo celebrated liturgy in 33 different cities in America, some more than twice, even traveling six times to Pueblo, Colorado, and six to Hartshorn, Oklahoma. Approximate total missionary miles of work over 25,000, and yet he greatly diminished his travel 
after 1907. All of this by horse and buggy, train or commercial fishing boat, and we're still searching for more information. In retrospect, this speaker is in awe that the most venerable Archimandrite, Father Theocletus Triantafilides, may truly be the forgotten first Greek, Serbian, Russian, Antiochian, American Orthodox saint. He was the answer to our predecessors every prayer. He traveled extensively on a global basis to serve the religious needs of many. He provided the connecting link for our multi-ethnic American lives and through the teachings of orthodoxy and his God-given art of language, he led us on the path of St. Paul, past the ever-separating ethnic divide. At our website, GalvestonOrthodox.org, you will find a link to our so far complete history of Father Theocletus. I would be pleased to give this presentation for groups meetings at your local parishes. Footnote. To give his history, I first relied on the stories told to me in my youth. Then, in later life, I researched to compile the factual documentation and along the way uncovered many other surprising truths. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation.